Alright, so hopefully fifth times the charm. Um, I was recently asked to make a video explaining how to use Creed EX's Art and Nautical Battle System for RPG Maker XP, and this is my fifth attempt at making the video. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first thing you want to do is, of course, find the battle system. And you do that by going to Creed EX's page. That is Gamora Castle. You can just type it directly into the URL or you can Google it. Um, and you want to go to RGSS Scripts. This only works with RPG Maker XP, as you can see here. He has not uh, made a VX Ace version. Uh, he may eventually, but so far he hasn't. So you want to click on the download link, it will take you to Mediafire, and there you can download the, net, the demo with the battle system already implemented. Now, whenever you are going to integrate multiple scripts together into a single game, you want to base, let's just close that pop-up, you want to base your game on the battle demo. Why? It's usually easier to implement menu systems or any other kind of script than it is to implement battle systems. So as they are a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and see what this battle system does. And then we'll go ahead and start talking about how to modify it. So there you have the battle system that's default this is what it brings and when you start the battle there you see the characters you have the side view enemies on the left you on the right it's usual here you have uh, the queue um, it's it's where the characters act in order according to their wait time and here you have your basic status window down here you have a bar that increases according to the actions that you make um, and here you have two uh, different skills that are blacked out. We'll go into that in a little bit. Alright, so that would be one of the versions of the battle system. Here's the next one. Alright, um, if you saw in the previous version, the characters use SP skill points to perform their skills, their special skills. In this version, you have everything implemented, including the song magic which Artanelico is uh, famous for. And if you see here on the right, there are no SP bars. The reason being the characters use HP under this uh, battle mode to cast their skills. Personally, I don't like this style very much. I prefer the SP version. Um, and if you look at what's happening here, um, where you see ambience field set to false, game system vanguard SP set to true. That is what defines whether your characters will be using SP or HP to cast their skills. In this one, uh, it doesn't have any script calls. It doesn't call any scripts, so it just goes back to the default, which is using HP for uh, the skills. So if you want to make a game that uses SP for the skills, you want to have an event that runs at the beginning and which specifies that you do want the battle system to run on SP. So we'll do that by just deleting everything except the script call. So we'll let this event call the script. It'll say, um, all right, so now you're going to go ahead and use SP for your skills. And let's just go ahead and get rid of this. Let's set the player starting position here, and let's just put like a battle here somewhere. This will do. Alright, so that's about it. Let's just get rid of the text. 
And now that we've done that, when you try out a battle and when you make a game, well, something's wrong here. Did we set this to auto run? Of course not. Auto run. So now that we've set this script to auto run, that's really important. Of course, you know you have the script called, but you do need to start the process. So when the game starts, it will call the script that lets you use SP instead of HP, and then it will shift to the next tab, which does nothing. The next tab of the event. So you just go ahead and play this. And now when you go into the battle you'll see that your character skills have the SP and you'll see that you're also able to use the song magic the reason for that being that we didn't remove her we didn't remove the Ravy Tail character from the original lineup let's go back to the original one if you look at this battle system here it removes the Ravy Tail that's a spellcaster um, the same is true of this event which is essentially using HP for your skills but you don't get the Raver Tail um, so the system isn't really processing all this stuff that the Raver Tail does there are no calculations going on and then of course it's a normal one um, so if you want in your game to have your characters use HP instead of SP for their skills you just go ahead and delete this event um, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it action button it's not gonna run so it's as if I would have deleted it new game and now you'll have the characters use the HP for their skills skill, agitate, whatever and you'll see their HP point drop their HP drop as they use their skills now if you want to make a game with very with a very limited number of enemies so if you want to use the palm if you want to use the valkyrie the ice palm the wind palm and the leech only as enemies and if you want to have your main characters be called Sitsuna, Ophelia, Gracer and Chelsea you are good to go. You can go ahead and start making your game. Um, if you want to change some things from the character, it might be that you have to go into the systems folder. Um, let me go ahead and tell you first what you can change and what you uh, what you can change easily. First, um, when you have the character graphics here, changing that should really have no effect on how the game works. So Let's go ahead and put the traditional RTP XP hero as a graphic and let's just change it to see if we can get like a whiteish color for its hair. Yeah, I guess not. Whatever. Good enough. Alright, so we changed the character graphic in the overworld map and let me just go ahead and activate this because yeah, I like SP better and that should really give you no problems. If all you want to change is the actor graphic so that's fine and if you want to change the battler graphic that's also fine so let's just go ahead and click on this and let's see that instead of that so now we'll get the valkyrie just for the heck of it so we play that and now when you go into the battle you'll get the valkyrie as a character uh, this won't change any of the stats or anything it'll just change the visual representation now if you want to use another character of your own let's see uh, edited all let's use some of mine maybe you want to use a different character that you've created or that you've edited um, for your battle sprite let's just go ahead and copy these over here copy here and these are, by the way, these are called Minkoff style characters. Usually they'll come in sheets of 10 or 11 uh, rows. So this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11 rows and 4 columns. I like the setup with 11 characters better because that's how most battle systems are originally set up. However, some characters do have 10 rows only. So in this one, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, this one has 10 rows only. And that's something that you are going to have to uh, play with in the script section. But we'll look at that later. right? So let's just go ahead and transfer these five characters into the battler section. And again, if all you want to do is change the visuals of the characters, these are all recolored and edited versions of Dull Mage's characters. I'm not going to change this one because that was a tenor. This one's a tenor. Um, so if you want to change the battle sprites, you're good to go. Game, go into a battle, and there you have it. So just attack and whack, and there. Now, if you want to change the name of the characters, you might be in a bit of trouble. So let's take Setsuna and call it Joe. Joe. And that's going to give you an error if you don't do anything else, if you want to just rename the character. The reason being that when the system goes into battle, it looks for several things. Right? If you recall the battle window, let's just go ahead and set this. Uh, let's just go ahead and go into the battle window. In the battle window, you have different elements. You have the background, you have the icons, you have the battler characters, you have the uh, harmo bar down here, you have the enemy, and you have the status window down here and the battle window up here. And what the system does is that when you define the name of a character here in the database, the script will look for the status window image and the battler image for the top for the queue based on whatever name you have here so if you want to call a character Joe then what you need to do is you also need to go into the pictures folder and you need to create a battle face that one, not that one, and a status face for Joe. So let's just go ahead and call this battle face Joe and status window Joe. And then just that alone would be like a little bit confusing. So let's just go ahead and give it a little bit of a unique flare. I'm going to use paint.net because that's a free photo editor if you have like Photoshop or something better. That's cool. You can use Photoshop, but you know, for, for what I do, really this is good enough. It's never let me down. So let's just go ahead and make a sort of makeshift image. This is this one that we're using. Yes makeshift battle image and whatever so let's just go ahead and blur this a little bit fragment I'm gonna call that good enough and this one effects blur there we go so now we'll just zoom in here and there's my toolbar down here let's just crop this image copy and then we just paste it in here into this window that we have already called Joe. Why didn't I paste it into a new layer? That was ridiculous. Uh, paste into a new layer. There we go. Paste into a new layer and keep the canvas size. And there we have the battle face for Joe. Yeah, 
that, so you can overwrite that. Flatten. And here you have, let's just window layer. There. And here you have the status window for Joe. So now that we've done that, we just take the battle face and status window of Joe, we put them into the pictures folder inside the games folder. Right, so we have the games folder, we have the graphics folder, and then you need to place that inside the pictures folder. And so when you run the game with your new character Joe the Knight, why did I close it? So when you run the game with your character Joe the Knight, There you go. You have the status and the battle phase. And now the game won't crash because the system is looking for Joe's images, which it has found. So that's how you edit one of the existing characters into a different one. So if you want to change the name of Setsuna or Chelsea or who were the other two, uh, Grancer and Ophelia, that's how you do it. You change the name, name, you go into the graphics folder, into the pictures folder, you create a battle face and a status window that end with the name of that character. So if we were making one for this character that we've just called name, we would just call it here, name make sure that you get capitalization correct and spacing and everything and then the game will work All right. so I'm gonna leave it here for now because whenever I try to make long videos just like the system crashes and it doesn't work so hopefully this short one will work for a first video on the next one I'll uh, guide you through how to make your own characters how to add characters here to the character database and we'll go over how to make enemies, how to make additional enemies, right? Uh, so I'll see you in a few minutes.